Alright, so the 2022 2023 SPL season has come to an end. So, this is going to be my team of the season. They have 4 3 3 formation, it's pretty much all the formations are always like that. Go from goalkeeper all the way up to the last forward, pretty much. And go starting off then as Keller Roos. Roos has played 31 games, keeping 13 clean sheets, which, to be fair, it's a fairly good return, especially for a first season in the SPL. New team, like everything basically. He was playing there in England for Derby County to be fair, so it's not like he needs to adjust to like almost a country fully. A wee bit high, but not a hell of a lot. Made 105 saves, averaging 3.3 per match. I could have went with Joe Hart quite easily, but I think Joe Hart was pretty much He's probably going to be in the team of the season anyway from the Premiership, so I thought Keller has done a little bit of job. I don't think Joe Hart could do for Aberdeen what Bruce has done, but I think Bruce could do for Celtic what Joe Hart has done. I think at his feet, it's been fairly good. The start of the season was obviously shit for Aberdeen under Jim Goodwin, and then once Barry Robson came in, you pretty much seen the absolute massive difference that he has made. Right back, I've went with James Tavern here. 16 goals and 9 assists. He creates, I don't even know how many chances per game. He's pretty much, if he can somehow stop Tavernier, you pair probably stop Rangers. Or you go with Borna Barisic, or you go with Cantwell now. Like. Tavernier, I think, now obviously got his 100th goal for Rangers, which is insane to have 100 goals for any club. Never mind them professional football's mental. The fact is that for one club, and he's a right back, it's not like he's a striker or a, more of an attacking fielder or a winger. He's a right back for God's sake. So I, I think with Tavernier, a right back, it's not really any other shit. He's played every game this season in the Premiership. And without him, Rangers would be a lot worse off. You've seen where if he's not been absolutely nailing on it. You've seen a slight dip in the performances, but I think pretty much Tavernier until the pretty much until he leaves Rangers, I don't think there'll be a better right back in the SPL than him, pretty much. I think right back wise he's pretty much got a slot nail down as team of the season what they for another five years or two? Don't really know. First central defender of the two is gonna be Cameron Carter Vickers. Ultimately not really much to say about him, but from quality presence, his leadership, everything. You see a difference when he's not playing to when he is playing with Celtic. Like, everything he's doing now is just gigantic, to be fair. I think the way that the team sets up with him, the way they set up without him, you've seen without him, it's been shocking defensively. It's been a struggle. Just the dominance for him, the fucking pure bastard attitude, basically. A person like, this is it, let's go for it now. You see the levels elevate. You see that when he came in last season on loan from Spurs. And you see him go up a level or two from when he joined permanently in the summer. Probably, if the awards were based off of overall, if you go for a defender of the season, I'd play a goal with Carter Vickers. Joining him at centre back, I've went with Carl Starfield. It was a difficult one to decide. I think if Goldson was fit for the other half of the second half of the season, I think he could have got in. But I think Starfield has shipped in with three goals, got an assist. He's been definitely a good complimentary partner to Vickers. Very good, very solid, all round. Fucking quality. Those two playing, you're pretty much, unless you're like Kyogo himself. Van Veen, maybe Shankland. You're not really getting many other strikers or attackers that would be able to like bully them or their number on them basically. At left back, I've went with Bora Barisic. Could have went with Greg Taylor, but I think Barisic has had just a better season. He scored once and got nine assists. I think the quality when you see, I'm not saying Yelmaz is a bad player. But I think you see the difference between Yelmaz. He is young compared to Barisic. He's obviously getting on now. He's got the experience. 
And I'll do that as well, basically put him through. I think the difference with Taylor is the physical presence of Barisic outweighs what Taylor can produce. Taylor's a, Greg Taylor's a good life back, but I think if you're comparing the two, I think Borna Barisic is fairly clear. And that pretty much range of defence, I think, with that. Two, you know, both fullbacks are Rangers, you both centre backs are Celtic, but there's really any arguing there. Could have realistically went with one or two different ones, but I think that's why you go for the defence. Midfield wise, first one I've went with Real Hatati. I think last season he was good, this season he was good. Six goals, eight assists, in 32 games. You see where he's not played. The level of creativity from the central midfield from Celtic is pretty much stopped. Unless you've got O'Reilly and Carl McGregor playing, it's going to be hard to really create any form of chances from deep, which he does that. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a move to one of the top five leagues in Europe, or I don't even know. Or easily could be Premier League, Bundesliga, top half, top sides, team. Realistically, if Leicester lose to Elmans, I think that could be a, a fantastic replacement for them. Even though they're in the championship now, I think Tatati could play in the Premier League comfortably. All he'd have to do is just adjust to the physicality a bit, but then on the ball, he's quality. Off the ball, we can see his sound. It's just about make sure he's physically can adapt there and that'll be him. Joining him will be his Celtic teammate, Matt O'Reilly. Three goals, 12 assists, played every game. He has been quality, you've seen. He's, I think, 22. Or not long done, 22. You've seen the quality. I think they paid... I don't even think they paid anything from MK Dons for him. Or if they did, that was like a minimal fee. I think O'Reilly a long way. Hattati could comfortably play in the Premier League or in the top five leagues in Europe. He's got that quality. On the ball, he's, he can ping one. It's insane what he's got on the ball. Off the ball could probably be a lot better defensively, but he's young, he's learning, and he will definitely grow, basically. So, those two for midfield, in the midfield three is quality. And pretty much ahead of them would end up being Malik Tillman. If Rangers don't buy him, they buy Munich, they're stupid. Ten goals for assists. Him, him and Cantwell basically running a midfield with then a scumbag midfielder, you're pretty, like Loudstrom basically, I think you're chilling. That midfield is good for another three or four years. Then you'd have to replace uh, Loudstrom. But those two, if you had to have Cantwell, if Cantwell had a full season doing what he's done, or like half of what he's done, he'd be ahead of Tillman. But I think a midfield of Tillman and Cantwell next season will definitely help Rangers out massively. But for Tillman overall, I've seen the quality against us. I've seen the quality against other opposition. For what, 20 years old? 21 years old? I think it'll cost, like, I think there's a, could cost two or three million pound. Could end up being more. But you go and get him. You need that player that can just drive from midfield along with Cantwell. Comfortably he can do that without any real worry. And simple as that, really. Moving on to the forwards now. I've gone with the first one, the top goal scorer, the golden boot winner, Kyogo. 27 goals, 2 assists, in the league, 36 games out of it played. Got a double in the last game of the season against Aberdeen to basically seal the golden boot before Van Veen played them the day after, pretty much. You see the difference, as a lot of these players, without these players, you see a massive difference. If you had to take him out and play O or Hasbanovic, you see a difference straight away. Last season with Kyogo, it was okay, but no one the other level he's shown this season. You see he's been able to adapt to just not just the league and the culture, but the whole system overall. With the way Celtic play, you've kept shot apparently. You've been able to make things like Carl Vickers permanent. You brought in players to then bolster the attack to mean like you just can't have an off game. Kyoka cannot be lazy. Oh, you've got Maida, that was obviously there last year. Has Banovic, 
Oh, so he's just coming in and be like, yeah, we'll take your place if you're being a lazy cunt, basically. And he did have Jim Marcus at the start of the season, which that was a poor decision to let him leave. I understand that he would have wanted to leave to play week in, week out. But I think it's a good replacement bringing in O to replace him, especially when I think you pretty much paid lives for all than what you got for Joe Marcus, which is good business from Celtic, which they pretty much always seem to do. And we pause the goggler if you can keep him, which is rumoured to go in talks with Spurs, you keep him around for another three or four years. You'll probably be having the team with the most expensive player, maybe like five million, six million max. And maybe the average is maybe a million or two million basically. And you'll get these players, Vickers, Hitati, O'Reilly, Kyogre himself, probably going for 30, 40 million comfortably. If you can have him on a, a lengthy contract by the time they go to be sold. The second strike I've went with is Shankland. 24 goals, 4 assists. I know half, I think almost half the goals have been penalties, but he's pretty much the only reason the Hearts got fourth this year. Should have got third, but just bottled job mentality basically from Hearts. Had to see on the last day of the season two Hibs and a 1 0 draw at Dinecastle. After having to play, I think it was 60 odd minutes with 10 men. I think Shankland, without a doubt, is a good striker. If Celtic had to sell Kyogo in the summer, you can go with Shankland. I think it would be a good replacement. I know you've got the ones already sitting there waiting, but if you need to bring another option, I think Shankland's your guy. I think comfortably, 100% would be an option for Celtic. And the last forward, it's got to be Kevin Van Veen. There's, you could argue there's a bit of bias about this, but 25 goals in the league, Two assists, sits two behind Kyogo, one ahead of Shankland. You've seen the quality, I love the guy. Thankfully we didn't see him to China back, I think it was like February or late January time. Because without him we'd be relegated, comfortably we'd be relegated. Without him, I don't know where we'd be this season, apart from getting relegated with Dundee United in the playoffs basically. He's under contract for next season. Until the end of the next season, so 2024 is when his contract will expire. I would then sell for less than three million pound. Two million plus a million and add guaranteed add-ons, not like oh, if we do this and we do that, no. Two million plus a guaranteed million and add-ons within a season, or three million flat fee. There's no selling for him. He's 31 year old. If you're signing him, it's not with a view to sell him in two or three years time. If they scored 50 or 60 goals for you and develop him as a player, he's coming in, scoring 20 goals in the league comfortably for at least two seasons consecutively or even three, and then he'd go on to retire. Pretty much that's it. His next move will be financially determined for him and the club. If we don't get a good fee from him, he doesn't move. But if we get a good fee and uh, he gets five grand a week I think he moves on comfortably but with that I think that is what the team of the season should be you could argue maybe Cantwell could come in but I think playing half a season you can't he really Joe Hart could probably come in for Kelvis I would say Kelvis has had a better season I think with Joe Hart you expect him to do what he's doing at Celtic with this you didn't know what you'll get with him from Derby Especially after being relegated basically from the championship. Could have Greg Taylor at left back. Maybe have another midfielder or so. Centre back it was between Starfield and Goldson, but I think with Starfield playing the last half of the season compared to Goldson, I think that's pretty much how the team lined up. Attackers wise, you can't argue with that. With Kyogo Van Vien and Shankland, I think they're the best in the league. And I think the quality on display from all three this season has been insane. I don't think Kyogo would probably have expected maybe 20 goals, maybe not 27. Would never have expected 25 for Van Veen. And Shanklin, I probably would, to be fair, have expected a goal uh, 20 odd goals, or 15 to 20 goals at least. But with that, that is the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, leave a like. 
subscribe to the channel with our catches in the next one. Goodbye.